Uh, now I go back to what was your other question? DK? Uh, well, yeah, DK. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of the match? What do you think, think of he, him? And uh, yeah. Your I thoughts? think he won. I think he won. And the reason why he won is because everything was set up for him to win. And he was a stunt. It was a publicity stunt, very well designed, very good from his part. And I respect his entrepreneurial uh, insight into mm -hmm. setting up that fight. Um, he wanted to prove the point that he could survive in a match with, with a mixed martial artist. And he did. Now, I know that people will start yelling at me and say, but he did this, but the hugs, but this, but the referees, but this and this and this and this. And you got these other YouTubers, they say he desecrated the sacred sport of boxing. Yes, so did Gracie in UFC 1. <laughs> Wasn't UFC 1 a whole stunt? We, we know that that's history, okay? And it's not me mm -hmm. saying, there's other people saying that former referees at UFC 1 that admitted they were paid by the organization, which was the Gracie, mm -hmm. into creating a situation in which he would prevail. Now, and then the second question will be, but he was a better martial artist than DKO. Oh, okay, that's not what I'm saying, okay? That's, I'm not comparing the martial artists and the arts and the value of their teaching. I'm just saying that they were both events that were organized to promote a certain player, a certain practitioner. And on that level, I put him on the same level, okay? Mm, and the, this okay. DKO thing is UFC one uh, all over. Or for uh, self-defense guys. More self-defense guys versus MMA, guys. MMA fighter. And, and of course, <laughs> in, in a boxing match, which doesn't make sense because it doesn't if you're a make sense. self-defense guy and you're an MMA guy, why are we doing boxing? Let's, 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 let's bare knuckle it. And okay, it doesn't make sense for, for the UFC one to have Gracie with wearing his gi, but nobody else could wear their shin guards or their boxing gloves. The, the striker, the kickboxer couldn't wear his thing. Oh, I wasn't okay. aware they weren't allowed to, to wear no. whatever they want. No, 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 no. It was very specific of what they could have. Okay, okay. And okay. oh, recruiting a so-called sumo fighter and then, <laughs> throw, and then you know, it wasn't really a sumo fighter. But and then if he was a sumo fighter, you throw him off the game, the match before because you don't want him to compete because just by sitting on him, it would have mm -hmm. won the match against Gracie. So... Uh, there's a video of Jesse Yankamp that, that talks about this and gets into the specific of what happened. And, you know, that's history. And again, that has nothing to do with the quality of BJJ. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not how, the, the, the misunderstanding is that by setting up this false experiment, you could prove something on something else. That's not how science works. That's not how experiment work. You know, this is at the very least, if you don't cook the results, this is pure empiricism. This is like, let's try and see what sticks. That has nothing to do with science. So you cannot prove anything with that. And in this particular case, when you have the KO or the AFC one, it's something that is designed to produce a certain result. And the only thing you can say is whether or not they produce the result or not. Okay, so so you think he was he won because he was successful in essentially promoting his himself and and showing yeah. that hey I survived against a heavier opponent, uh, uh you know and um yeah, and 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 essentially I was injured and blah 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 so I yeah you know hmm. absolutely I think my opinion is that on that level if you, we're talking about who won uh -huh. from a from a media communication perspective, mm -hmm. he won. That's hands down. Insane, insane. But but like the people who who actually look at that fight and who are who know what they're looking at. But I'm assuming I'm thinking here the people who follow him religiously probably don't know what they're looking at anyway. But the people yeah. who know what they're looking at know that obviously he was uh, uh, he didn't get the upper hand in that fight at all. Of and course. Yeah, but but I mean, he's gonna spin it the way he's gonna spin it, obviously, because uh, technically you know, speaking, technically mm -hmm. speaking, if you know what you're looking at, uh -huh. and, and again, I understand Ramsey Dewey going and be bad about that because oh yeah yeah Ramsey boxing. Ramsey freaked out. 
<laughs> he understands boxing. Mm-hmm. Okay, he he understands fighting. He understands uh, mixed martial arts. He understands traditional martial arts. He understands self defense. He understands boxing. He understands all these things. And if you look at that from the perspective of once a person that's trying to evaluate what's happened from a technical perspective, yeah, got to be mad about it. There's no other way around. You have to be mad about it. You mean because he played the rules or? um... Because of all the things that he did, okay? Oh, everything that he did. But if you look at that from a communication perspective, well, he did everything that he was supposed to do from a propaganda marketing point of view. He excelled that way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and I you know that's that's the way I see it because I don't know boxing as you know as as you know as much as Ramsey Dewey does I don't mm-hmm. I don't know the intricacy of MMA and the rules and and the conduct and everything so I can't have that, um, that mm-hmm. I, my opinion will work nothing uh, okay. in, in in that in with that respect but from a communication from a scholarly communication perspective uh yeah i i think i think he won I, i'm sorry i i think <laughs> you know i know people won't like this answer but i you know I think oh he yeah won. yeah he, he probably uh he'll probably get more uh, you know i think that i think that might be true in the sense that like he's gonna get more follow followers he's gonna get more people you know like uh more students he's gonna do more seminars you're gonna you know like uh it's gonna boost his business and you know i i always wonder like though like, why did he even want to do a fight? Because I feel as though it was never in his best interest to go, um, you know, to go into a match like that where he could potentially get knocked out and that could like pretty in the first round, in the first, you know, first minute. And then after that, that would technically ruin his business, you know? Mm-hmm. But I think now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, okay, he wanted, either he was delusional or he wanted to prove something. He really wanted to prove something to the world delusional in the sense that he really thought that he could do something no I don't um, think so. mm. or maybe um he went in thinking that okay publicity st- like he's gonna do all this it's, it's essentially a big publicity stunt and then from there he rigged it so that he wouldn't get knocked out you know and i think that this is good this is gonna be this is gonna sound a little bit uh maybe a little bit crazy but i think that brad had all the intentions of knocking him out, like they mm-hmm. were saying, uh, you know, like uh, leading up to the fight, you know, and it wasn't a long lead up. I mean, they they they, they had the um, uh, they had the date and everything, and the fight set up in like I think a week or less than a week or something like that. Or two which weeks. which tells you something. Yeah, yeah, of course he was like he didn't want him to be prepared. He didn't want him to get enough sleep, and uh, you know all kinds of stuff, right? <clears throat> so where was I getting at? So I think that Brad wanted to knock him out, but then, and that was the plan. That's what they were training for. And then when they got to Korea, like there was a lot of, the, at a press conference, uh, like there was some other, uh, uh, it, during the, the press conference, there was like this, uh, this, this, this uh, Korean kick, high level kickboxer that was calling out Brad, telling him, why are you like picking on somebody smaller than you? It's me and you fight instead and blah, 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 blah. And after that, they, they, they felt as though like the guys from Fight Bible, Brad and, and his, uh, his, his partner, I forgot his name. Uh, is it Joe? Is that, mm, is that his name? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, call him Joe for, yeah. let's call him Joe for now. So. Yeah. Just for that. <laughs> you guys could correct me in the comments if I'm not yeah, absolutely. If I'm mistaken. But they were saying that they felt as though like they were trying to use that press conference to set up, um, to set up, uh, uh, the whole narrative that Brad is being a bully and mm-hmm. that and set up that next fight uh, with the, the other opponent. Right. Mm-hmm. But then after that, I think Brad like handled that well. And he said, listen, he's the one who, you know, reached out to me. Like I offered to, I called him out and challenged him, but he, he's the one who said yes and brought me here knowing full well that I'm a lot bigger than him. So, and we're doing, you know, we're doing mm-hmm. a, a boxing match. We're doing everything according to what he wants to do. Um, but I feel as though, and Brad mentioned this, that after that, he spoke to the organizer of that event. And the organizer of that event has like a, like, I think the biggest chain of gyms in, in Korea. And he had his uh, logo and everything plastered on, on, on the floor of the boxing ring. Mm-hmm. And he said to Brad, like, um, uh, you know, oh, I hope, you know, 
can you please make it last long enough so that people could see my logo <laughs> kind of thing? And they probably had some kind of conversation with that. And I mean, that guy's a rich man, right? Now, if you help a rich man out and do him a favor, he might help you out afterwards. You know, it's, it's kind of that thing. And then I think that a lot of people, even on, on, on DKU side, was talking to Brad and Joe and telling them, please don't kill him. Please don't kill him. Be nice. And then DKU himself was a very nice guy. And I think that Brad kind of understood that there was more opportunity for him. Like he could prove a point that he could yeah. beat him. He could beat him up, but he didn't have to knock him out and embarrass him because mm -hmm. it he had more to gain to make it last as long as it did and, and not, uh, not destroy him in the first minute and still prove his point. Because then after that, it opens up doors. Now he has that match coming up potentially with, uh, you know, so on a business perspective, I think Brad did the right thing you know, uh, for himself. And he proved the point. Like he, he, like anybody who knows what they're looking at knew that DK, um, you know, like had no chance. And Brad was like having mercy on him. You know, mm -hmm. he didn't want it at any time in that fight. He could have just, even if uh, DK was hugging him, get a pushed him up, pushed him off really, you know, the weight difference weight is a big issue is a, is a serious factor in fighting. He could have pushed him off and knocked him out. You know, like mm -hmm. a two free punch combo, like really pushed him off hard and crack him while he was like bouncing off the ropes or whatever. He could have done that anytime he wanted to, but he didn't. Um, mainly because he wanted to prove his point without knocking him out. And at the same time, it would benefit him uh, to be, um, uh, you know, to be in good, in good standing with, uh, with everybody there. And, but then there's a lot of guys who criticize them for that. Like, hey, what happened? How come you didn't knock him out and stuff? Red Chucks, my buddy Red Chucks. I don't know if you know Red Chucks. No. Okay, he's a, he's a multiple-time champion concrete breaker. So this is like a little shout-out to him. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he's on YouTube too. So he breaks concrete with his bare fists oh, and his wow. elbow, and he kicks it. And, and, and he has the world, like, he, he, he's a champion. Like, there's events for this. And, yeah, he's a champ. Huge guy, huge guy has, uh, he's like, I think six foot, uh, six foot five. Um, so red chucks, you could correct me if I'm wrong <laughs> when you watch this clip and he's about, I think he's about 265 pounds and he's, he's pretty lean too at that weight. Like, hmm. and, um, lifetime martial artist also, you know, uh, very awesome. into it. Awesome. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, he studied jet, jet can do and all kinds of stuff. And yeah, he's very, he's a very cool guy. Um, and he was, he was saying that, like, as much as he's friends with Brad's too, you know, like they talk and all. And he was saying that, like, if you want to prove somebody to be a fraud, and that's what Brad was saying the whole time, I'm going to prove that this guy doesn't know what, what the hell he's talking about. I'm just going to knock him out. So R Red Chucks was saying, you got to knock him out. You mm -hmm. got to go in there and knock him the hell out. And if you didn't, now all of a sudden, like you're giving room for everybody else to see. See, see, DK managed to survive. He's his system works. He blah blah blah, and so on and so on and so on and so on. And and Red Chucks was like furious about that. He was he was going crazy on his channel regarding that. You know, he's like he should have should have knocked him out. That's what that's that's how he should have went down. Shut these fools up once and for all that, you know, like a DKU is some kind of like the new Bruce Lee or whatever, or, you know, like just knock him the hell out. But then Brad didn't do it. I understand why Brad didn't do it. And uh, I, I respect Brad a lot for that, actually, for not knocking him out because it would have been, uh, I find it would have been overkill. And then he would have been seen as a bully. You know, you ever heard of a Chu Xiao, Xiao Dong? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So the way yeah, yeah. And so this guy, like after beating up all, all those Tai Chi masters and all that. And, then and I think I think the, the initial the match was supposed to be with him. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But then um, people were saying that um, like it was set up in a way where like DK knew that uh, Xu Xiaodong couldn't would have been impossible for him to come anyway because of visa issues and stuff like that. Him being in China. I mean, it's, it's all a game yeah. set up. It's all a game set up. We're going back to warfare. So we, we are getting into the idea that this is warfare on, on a level that is behind the ring and behind the mm -hmm. cage, because even, 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 uh, even him, you know, he beat off all these Tai Chi masters and Kung Fu masters. First of all, he also has a background in traditional Kung Fu and Wushu and martial arts. Okay. <laughs> and, and also the people who fought to, we're, we're not exactly, we're, we're the laughing stock um, mm -hmm. of those communities to begin with. So it's, it's all a show. 